Sergeant Bruce Guthrie of Unit 99 at Headquarters, Police Department, City of Sacramento, California. My detail is to ride in Unit 99, our tape recorder equipped radio car, and to respond whenever the dispatcher transmits a signal to one of our other units on duty somewhere in the city. At the scene, we make the recordings which we provide for this program. Now, to tell you more about Unit 99, here's our chief. James B. Hicks, Sacramento Police. The job of a police officer is your protection. The cases you hear on this radio program are real cases. The police are real. The victims and the criminals are real. We are glad to provide Unit 99 and Sergeant Guthrie so that you will hear how the police of a great city work night and day for your protection. Make no mistake about it. There are no actors on these tapes. They are real from beginning to end. Now to Unit 99 and Sergeant Bruce Guthrie on duty. Airport, I am 40A bus driver, 30th and V Victor. The call is incomplete, 30th and V Victor. We have an incomplete call from a bus driver at 30th and V. Unit 4 has been dispatched. No cover. It could possibly be a 211. Unit 4 is parked behind a car, which is parked directly behind the bus. The officers are talking to the bus driver. Apparently the other car is the uh, dispatcher, one of the checkers for the bus company. Hi, Ed, what do you got? Uh, this bus driver was just robbed down here, blocked down, Sergeant. Armed robbery? Armed robbery. 211. Yes, sir. A uh, man was standing at the bus stop, and the dress driver pulled to the curb, opened the door, and the man... Standing in the shadow of the pole, uh, thrust out a gun and told the driver to throw his changer out, which he did. He says, okay, shut the door and get going. And the driver pulled away and drove down here a block and went to this house here and called the police. We're about to uh, broadcast a description on this suspect. We don't have very much as he stood in the shadows and the driver couldn't get a very good look at him. Unit 4 to KM907. Right, Following is a description of a 211 suspect from 30th and W. William. He robbed a city transit lines bus. He's MWA, wearing Levi's or blue jeans, light colored shirt. He's male white adult and carried a 32 or 38 automatic. That is the only description we have at this time. You going to question the driver any further? Yeah, I have to get this information for our report. I'm going to need a couple of items here. Personal. Officer Burt is taking the information, getting the bus driver's nugget, so that he can make the report later. Now, you were traveling north on 30th. That's right. And you say you noticed a man standing... That's a regular bus stop. At that's that. a regular 30th, bus stop, yes. That's and W. That's and a you observe somebody standing there. You pulled into the curb as customary to pick up passengers. That's right. And when you pulled up and stopped and opened the door, and he said what? The man said, throw out your changer, close your door, and move on. And uh, you removed your changer from where? The rack and the... The rack on the side of the steering wheel there. And just tossed it out onto the grass there? That's right. And shut your door and, and drove off. Now, can you give me an estimate of how much money was in that changer? Yes, it was a full changer, sixty-one fifty. Sixty-one fifty. That's all in nickels, dimes, quarters, and tokens, and halves. And halves. Seven rolls of tokens. Seven rolls of tokens. Mm -hmm. Four rolls of dimes and two rolls of nickels. So we had about forty-six fifty in tokens. There, forty-eight dollars in tokens, and that's sixty-one fifty. Thirty-eight, thirty-eight fifty in tokens and twenty dollars in dimes, and two rolls of nickels, two dollars each. Be $4. That's what I started out with from the barn, and I just made change coming up here. So, actually, got about $24 in cash, and yeah, out of the 61. You sure gonna have a bunch of tokens, or anything? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, can you tell me anything about this man's voice? Is it a heavy voice, thick voice, any accent? No, or? there's no accent. It didn't seem heavy, it didn't seem thick, it just a normal voice. 
from his voice, would you get the impression that perhaps he was an older man rather than a... Well, no, I'd say he was in his 30s. In his 30s. And you can't tell me anything about his size, would you give me... Well, yeah, I could. I mean, roughly guessing it wouldn't be anything accurate. I'd say it was... He's pretty stocky. I noticed that. I'd say he's about 5 foot, 5'5", five, five, something like that. Just rough. And you didn't notice whether he had a hat on or... No, he never had no hat on. No hat. But you didn't get a look at his face at all, you... No, uh, because I pulled the headlights of the bus past him, and he stood just back of the door where I couldn't get a look at him through the door light. In other words, you don't think you'd recognize him if you saw him again? I might, but it'd be a very slim chance. I see. How about his voice? Would you recognize his voice? Well, that's hard to say, Sergeant. You didn't really speak enough to where you can judge no. it very well. <clears throat> you would know your changer if you saw it again, though. You bet your life I'd know that changer. You believe the, uh, you said you believe the man was left-handed? Well, that's, I uh, assume that's the guy, the hand he had the gun in. Well, that's about all we'll need for now, Sergeant. I'm going to broadcast uh, some additional on the description. And then what are you going to do? We'll uh, 924 the station to make the report on this uh, occurrence. Sometimes it is difficult to understand the thinking of a petty criminal. This holdup man risked the penalty of a charge of armed robbery to steal about $24 and a quantity of bus tokens. From here, it looks like he was betting on very poor odds. Unit 2, Unit 2, Unit 2 received a dispatch. They're holding a man at 19th and about U Street. Didn't say what it was. We better cover in and see what happened. The unit is here. The officers are already in the building. We'll go see what they have. Here. Officers are supposed to be out and back. Officers Hennessy and Cooper have a man backed up against the fence. What do you got, Cooper? Well, I don't know. This this uh, citizen here says that he uh, had uh, some fellow steal a television set from him here a while back some other items from his house. He says, this is the man. I haven't talked to him anymore yet. Where'd you get this man? Right here alongside the tracks. He was squatted down here, leaning up against the building. What's the stuff that Hennessy's going through? Well, that's a bundle he had in his possession. Looks like a bunch of old clothing, huh? A bunch of old clothes, it looks like. Have you talked to this guy at all? No, not yet. Why don't you see if you can find out what he's doing back here? What are you doing back here, partner? I come from Stockton. I come you came from here. Stockton? Yeah. Today? Today? How did you come? I like you out of here. Yeah, let's take it around in front. Did, we'll you, park did you come by train or how did you come? Train coming in. We're right on the tracks. We're going to have to move around in front of the building. I'm going to go on with the questioning now. You say you came up from Stockton today? Yeah. You came up on a train? I come on the first train. Where did you get off? Right here by these houses? Oh, right there, right there. He's my stuff there, right there. He got it. I got it. Left some stuff here? You've never been around here before. Before today, is that right? Yeah, I think you're yeah, kind of mixed yeah. up. You had a little bit too much wine today, isn't that right? No. He gave me a drink while I go. This guy here. He gave you a drink? Where was it? Where were yeah, you? Right here. You give us a drink, remember? Where were you when he gave you this drink? Were you in his house? In his house. He told, he told me, house. come on, come on, he's house. Give a drink. I don't know. I'm going to have to. I'm not still not doing it. Well, we'll go over and talk to this other fellow and see right. what happened. Did you find out what happened, Hennessy? 
As far as I can determine, this man here says that that fellow there is the the culprit who stole his radio, radio and, 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 and uh, shaving gear about a month ago. Yeah. He says he recognized him by the scar on his face. Yeah. Well, what happened tonight? Well, he came in the yard and I gave him a drink to retain him. So went and phone. What kind of a drink did you give him? Well, a glass of wine. And yeah. I got out of the house right away. Because he, he locked the door on me last time and wouldn't let me get out. He, he had a knife and I was terrified of the man. And we'll forget him. Well, what did he do this time? Well, this time he just sat there and I got over next door to phone right away. You're sure that he's the man that uh, yes. got your TV? How did no, he get not, it? No, not TV, a radio. Just radio? A radio. Well, how did he get the radio? He, well, you see, I tell you, I was scared of him. I went over across the street to the phone in the alley. The time, and then when I came back, I wouldn't go in the house. And so when we got the officer, we, me and this officer couldn't find him. We went down 19th Street and looked all over. We couldn't find him nowhere. Well, how did he get your radio? He just walked in and took it. How did he get in your house that time? Well, he was out by the fence, and I gave him a cup of coffee and a bowl of stew. And, 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 then he, and then he took the radio. He, I, I asked him if he wanted a bowl of stew, and I gave him a bowl of stew in the house, and he locked the door on me. And I said I had to go to the restroom. And I, and I, I, I pretended I had to go to the restroom, and I got out. But he had a knife. He threw the knife in the thing, and I was terrified of the man. I didn't know if he was going to cut my throat or what. He was just getting over a drinking cup. Did he party. actually threaten you at that time? No, but he terrified me. Uh, he just terrified me. You were just plain afraid of him? Yes, yeah, very much. He didn't actually threaten no, you no, personally. No, he didn't, sir. No, no, he didn't. What uh, else? What else did you say you lost besides a razor? You know, a shaving razor. That's all. And a radio. Safety razor. That's right. You're positive that's the man. Yes, sir. What are you gonna do with this guy, Leo? Uh, we'll take him. I guess we'll take him down and book him. He's been drinking, see? Think we bag him. He's been drinking too. Yeah, he got off the off the train. Have him check him. Uh, he just wandered in the yard. Have him check him through on that uh, burglary that happened last month. You gonna have this guy sign a complaint against him tonight? No, I'm not. Mistaken. You gonna advise him what to do? Well, my only advice to him is to leave the bums alone. There was more to this incident than meets the eye, and I suspect that neither party was completely blameless. The suspect was sentenced to 30 days in the county jail on a charge of vagrancy. Unit four. There's a disturbance call on 2700 block on 22nd Street. Unit 4 has been dispatched. We're about six blocks from the call. Let's cover it. We're at the scene. There are several people on the porch of the house. There are at least a dozen juveniles wandering around within sight. We better get out and talk to these people and see what happens. No, I didn't. I rode by. Yes, he did. And I had another friend. He threw a knife, and the right. knife is still in my yard. Excuse me, may I talk? No. Yeah. Well, let, let him try to kill yeah. my dog. Quiet, quiet, lady. Well, I'm coming. Yeah. Yeah. I was in the oh, I'm coming. I was right there. Oh, God. Now, come here, Sean. Come on. Don't cry. Honey. Come here. Come, right. come on. on. I want to hear what you have. He's not here. Come here. I'm not going to hurt you. He did. <laughs> See, I was riding along on the bike, and the guy came along. And one of my friends, he took the knife out of my deal, out of my sheath, you know. It was a, we've been fishing took the knife and he threw it up against the garage in her backyard and then her dog came out and heard us and he started barking and then she threw she came out and I asked her may I have my knife you know I knocked on the gate a few times I said may I have my dog and uh she says no you can't have it and I said it's over there by the community plant will you please give it to me and she said she wouldn't give it to me so we went around the corner and I came up to the front door and I rang the doorbell and then she said there there's the boy that threw the knife at my dog and then the man came out and shipped me all over the sidewalk well, he didn't shoot you all on the side. Now, wait a minute. He shook me because he bit my body. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Now, be quiet. Down there on the ground. Now, let me tell you something. That's the biggest lie that ever said. You be quiet. Yes, I will, because all I was right. back there. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Now, I you shouldn't have been throwing the knife at the I fence. I didn't. No, I didn't. Well, your Another friend boy. was. You were with him. Now, right here, there's two people that were wrong. In the first place, he should have never shook him. In the first oh, place, he shouldn't have been throwing these. Now, if you people want... Well, that's neither here nor there. They were under the impression he was one of them. Now, now, wait a minute. Hear me out. Now, this is a misdemeanor not committed in my presence. If you want to go see the city prosecutor and make a formal complaint against these people for shaking the boy, well, you go ahead and do it. And if they want to... here just to find out what, what it was all about. And uh, I just wanted to see what really did happen. And this the gentleman here, he got all mad, and the lady went in, and well, he phoned, phoned for you. We seem to have gotten to the conclusion now, haven't we, huh? Something. I don't know. Well, 
Well, you can go home, and if you want, why, you can see the city prosecutor if you want to prosecute. I don't want to cause these people any trouble. And, I just uh, wanted to find out what it was all about, that's you all. People, if you want to claim malicious mischief, why, you got the same right to go up and see the city prosecutor. Now, the best thing I can see to do right now is for you people to go home, and you go on inside, and let's forget about this whole thing, huh? Just a, that's exactly the whole okay. thing is. If I made a mistake in shaking him, it's all right enough, but I don't want to. Uh, and another thing. This gentleman well, got can't. here, and he's got so excited that he even well, hit me. I was sitting right. there, and now you were sat there. No, wait a minute. No, no, yeah, I just no, want to tell you him. He was sitting there. He, on the he was sitting there, and he, the he got so oh, all here, hit me on the wrist oh, there. That's when I got up. Because I let nobody yeah. hit me when I'm sitting down. You realize <laughs> that if you have any trouble with some children around here, you're not to, you're not to come out and manhandle them. You call in if you have a complaint to make against them. Just as soon well, you don't you don't yeah, shake them. You just call us, uh, and, and vice versa. Don't you go around throwing any knives. Now you people can shake uh, and make up, or you can go up and see the city prosecutor. I don't care which. In settling this neighborhood squabble, the officer gave the parties involved some good advice. First, knives are bad playthings for small boys, and second, the privilege of administering corporal punishment on children belongs to their parents. Peace was restored to the neighborhood, and no complaints were filed. Unit 4, 30th and Broadway, holding shoplifters in the market. Check Unit 4, came in now, 7. Unit 4 has a call to a large supermarket at 30th and Broadway, holding shoplifters. Sounds like they have might have more than one. Let's cover in on it. already here parked in front of the store. Apparently the officers are inside. Let's go in and see what they have. This is a large market on one of the main streets of town. The officers are in the office. They'll be right at the door. We have the subject in custody. Mm -hmm. Hi, Bailey. What do you got? Got a woman here. It's been, uh, in the store here shopping around and she picked up a bottle, a pint bottle of I.W. Harper from a whiskey stand and she went through the stand without paying for it and she was picked up on the outside. Where is the woman now? She's in the office. Uh, uh, she was picked up, putting it in her bag, and as she was going out the door, she was arrested. Did the observer put the whiskey in her purse? Yes, he did. What did she do with it? She put it in her purse in the aisle. Did you watch her? Yes, sir. I'm upstairs from back. What uh, did she do? Then she bought two cans of beer, paid for the beer, walked out of the door, and I stopped her about 12 feet out. And you started watching her when she first came in the store? Or is it yeah, it's because of the fact she stayed in the whiskey aisle too long. If she had not stayed so long, there was another person in the aisle at the same time. She waited for him to move out so she could start performing. You watched her all the time she was in that aisle? Oh, yes, sir, with a pair of binoculars from a pie. Mm -hmm. They have regular observation places here in the store where they can watch. She's also been seen, uh, she's been seen a lot of times coming through the store. She's been snowing for three three nights in a row that she's been here. In other words, you've been a little suspicious of her actions. Yes, sir. Are you going to talk to the lady, Bert? Yes, sir, we are. She's uh, in the office here in the company of a female store employee. Okay. Officer Bert is going to talk to the subject in question. Is this, uh, your first attempt at this sort of thing? Yes, sir. Absolutely the first attempt. It is absolutely my first attempt. And you uh, frequent this store? I have. At the first of the month, each month, I come here and buy all my groceries here. You do? We What's buy it? them all here, my husband and I both. When you came in the store, what reason did you come into the store this evening? Did you have a purchase to make? Well, I was coming in after some beer. I was going to get some beer. We were driving by, mm -hmm. and I was going to get some beer. And I just... So I said, well, I'm going to do this for the first time. It was my first time. You he say, seems to think you say it I'm going to do this. Uh, what do you mean? That I was going to get that whiskey for the first time. It was then while you were down there in the aisle and you uh, got the whiskey I and were going to buy it. I, I was going to buy it and I decided not to. And then I said, well, I've seen it before and I've seen it done before. And I said, well, I, I'm going to try it. Mm -hmm. But I knew good and well that I couldn't, that it wasn't within me to do it. Uh, did you come to the store last night? No. Now, when you picked up you this... You seem to think that I've been here off and on just about every night or something like that, but you're very mistaken. There, uh, let's see, there's myself, this man here, 
that have seen you in here in the past few nights regularly. No, you haven't. I'm sorry, but you haven't. Here's my right hand to God. If you've seen me in this store, and I know darn well I haven't been here. Now, when you picked up that bottle of whiskey, you were fully intending to pay for it at the check stand. I was intending to, yes. And instead, you did what with it? Put it in my purse. And then what did you do? I was going to walk out with it. And what did you do? Did you make another purchase in order to cover, to explain your presence in the store? Yes. What did you buy? I bought cans of beer. Cans of beer. And some cigarettes? I offered to pay it, pay him the money for the for the whiskey, mm-hmm. and he said that he couldn't take it. Well, obviously your intent was to first... commit a theft. You've never been arrested before. I've never been arrested. Never have done anything before in my life. Never. What are you going to do with this lady, Bert? Uh The store detective uh, is going to sign the citizen's arrest complaint, and uh, we will take her down and book her at the city jail. Oh no. And. Uh, she will come in Monday morning and sign the formal complaint, and she will go to trial then. What's the specific charge? Petty theft. What's the value of the merchandise? Uh, $4.25. It will be marked and booked as evidence. Please, couldn't you do something else? I mean, after all, it is my first time, oh, ma'am, and you're, you're... I've never done it before. It's just on an impulse, and I, I just... I don't know what got well, impulse or no, you committed a violation of the law. I did, you, you but I had an offer to pay for it. Well, the fact remains that uh, your first uh, thought was not to pay for it. Well, sir, if if I have something like that, I don't want to mark my record up any at all. On your I've, record, you say you've never arrested I never have. That's what I mean. I don't want to have anything on me at all. You should have thought and of that before you committed the theft, ma'am. I have children, and I hate to. I wouldn't want my husband to know it for nothing in the world. You should have that first, ma'am. Oh, this shoplifter jumped bail and failed to appear for her hearing in court. Subsequently, however, she appeared. On a charge of petty theft, she was fined $50 with the alternative of 10 days in jail. She paid the fine. This is Unit 99 in Sacramento, California. These on-the-scene tape recordings were provided by the Sacramento Police Department and were made on duty by Sergeant Bruce Guthrie in Unit 99. Your host is Chief James B. Hicks of the Sacramento Police Department. Unit 99 was directed by Tony Kester and came to you from Sacramento. Unit 99 to KMA 907. Unit 99, 908 coming in. End of tour. Check 99. Unit 99 has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.